Tonight our penultimate contest is six three minute rounds of boxing in the light heavyweight division. Introducing to you firstly, boxing out of the blue corner, wearing the black leather shorts trimmed with white. At the weight he scaled, 12 stone, six pounds, four ounces. Tonight is his 14th professional appearance, presenting from Sofia, Bulgaria, Georgi Valevsky. Georgi boy. And opposing him, boxing out of the red corner, wearing the blue color shorts trimmed with white and black. At the weight he scaled, 12 stone, seven pounds, five ounces. His perfect record this evening reads eight contests, eight wins. One of those wins coming by way of knockout. He hails from the Robert Rimmers Phoenix camp via his home city here, beautiful Manchester, presenting the undefeated Charlie Schofield. Timekeeper. Peter Humphrey sitting proudly at the bell, also proudly awaiting us, Mr. John Latham from Barry. Six three minute rounds. Penultimate contest, here we go. Hashtag VIP Boxing Live. John, en John Enigmatic Evans, Luke Masterful Madeira in the commentary box. It's a late night, we've not been drinking. We've not done anything illegal, but the night's early. And it's we an after party. Yeah, get the after party. Steve Wood spinning the discs. Might pass. Here we go, Charlie Schofield. It's what, it's Seconds what? out, round one. Michael Passy's going. Michael Passy's there. Where are the after party? It's one of those types of parties, oh is it? Oh my God. Throw your keys in the middle and see which one of the dressing rooms you end up in. Here we go, Charlie Schofield. I know you two guys have uh, you label him one of uh, one of the most improved VIP boxers in the last 12 months. Do you know what? I'm just looking at Schofield then in the corner, and he, I know he's um, he's got this go hard fitness that he does a lot of work with and stuff like. That. One of the things that does catch me, you know, he, he looks him, he looks getting better, Nick. Every fight as well, he's starting to get a little bit ripped, and you know, he's starting to shred the weight. And you just look at you look at him there, and he's looking more and more athletic. And you know, the improvements are being made not just in his boxing performances, just in his general you know general shape and his general condition. Just needs to put a performance on now. I'll just give him a little bit of a big up there. We've been, we've been bigging Charlie Schofield up for a few fights now, I think. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's not let us down yet, has he either? I mean, no. uh, when you look at these two guys matched up, you can see exactly what Schofield needs to do. It could be absolutely made for him, couldn't he? He's just got to do it. As you say, I, the condition he's in and the performance, is, I think it's just down to confidence. Do you know, he it, it tries so hard, Charlie, as well, with everything. You know, you've got, you've got to like him. You know, he works, he, he, he works hard, then he, on social media he tries interacting, he tries building his profile. You know, he don't say silly stuff, he just, he just interacts with people, tries sharing his, you know, his training stories, all that kind of stuff with people. I know Brian Rose says it's um, Charlie Schofield 24-7, like HBO and stuff like that, but you see people interacting, you look at the views it gets, you look at the likes he gets. Likeable lad, people are enjoying it. Robert Rim is doing a good job with him as well. You know, don't think that we don't we don't tend to mention Robert. You know, he's kind of the quiet man, isn't he? And you know, he just goes about his work and yeah, the latest inhabitants of the uh, Phoenix gym. Yeah, it's risen again. Yeah, it's great as well. Isn't it? You've seen there. Uh, oh, it's just great. You know, it's been it's been it's been old to. Uh, I know I know Mr. Graham's got a very special place in uh, in your heart as well. But like you say, it's great. It's just great to see the you know the gym still going, still churning out still churning out fighters keep the tweets coming in guys hashtag VIP boxing live Luke Madeira is just there uh, he's just texting his mum asking if he's allowed to stay out for the last two fights hopefully he'll be alright not, not used to driving with the headlights on got his headphones on there as, as long as you're not with that Simon Clayton the message said so I <laughs> he said that earlier on he said he's never going to Buxton with me in a car I'll tell again. you what after our trip to Buxton <laughs> I think Lee Oldham did a good job and they've had a lot of good feedback on Martin Murray as well you know a lot of people saying they didn't realise you know before they knew it was round five as well with Martin on the come so been a good job all round Sheldon I've seen a good few, a few nice comments coming in for him as well yeah, a few people would have liked us to commentate on the fights a bit more, I think. But sometimes when you've got someone like Martin Murray or Steve Lewis, I think you should take advantage of what we know and 
take advantage of it. Ask them all the things you want to find out. So, I'm sorry if you don't like it, but we did. Yeah, that's the, that's the way it goes, isn't And it? we're in charge of our microphones, so that's what you got. Yeah, hashtag VIP Boxing Live. Don't forget, you can also comment on uh, Facebook. Should we get some Facebook comments right out? Yeah. Can't go on Facebook, you get too tempted to be a, a nosy get and see what people are Corners, up to. Corners, 10 seconds. So I've only got like, I've, I've probably only got three seconds serious. Out. Round two. Three serious ex misses. And they're all on Facebook. And I reckon all three of them have lost about three stones since I was with them. They're all happily married. They've all got kids. And I'm 49 days into a dry barren. You're living, you're living the dream though, Simon. I'm not, I'm you're not too you're sure at the Victoria that. Warehouse on a Saturday night. Watching Charlie Schofield. I probably would rather be here, actually, even with all three of them, because even though they've lost three stone, they're all big still heffalumps anyway, so uh, let's stay here. Schofield boxed well in that first round. He likes to box behind the jab, you know. There's nothing coming away from that. It's, it's the Bobby Rimmer way of doing it, and you know, Robert Rimmer's the same. Just that he, he's been a little bit more aggressive with each passing fight as well. Georgie Valevi, not offered a great deal, he's just trying to rough him up as well and when you're Charlie Schofield and you're looking to box at range, you're looking to box behind the jab, throw up bringing the one-twos in, with the uppercuts in as well. He's looking to spot, that's what Charlie needs to do. Apologies if you're having a, a few problems with the stream on Facebook, uh, I think it'll come back soon, don't worry about that. I mean they're not going to hear that if they're having troubles yeah, on Facebook. Yeah, watching it on VIP Boxing <laughs> TV. <laughs> Luke Madeira has just copped a right hand there off John Evans. Yeah, <laughs> he's done me there. Yeah, we've got a cutsman. If we can have a cutsman over here, but I know we've got a, we've got a doctor upstairs that fixes his teeth. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> that was not called a knockdown. I, I, w I wouldn't protest the stoppage there, you know. It's going to be it's going to be interesting where they go with Charlie Schofield because he's. I think, I think the level of opponents, I think the plan is obviously to get him to 10 and 0, 12 and 0, what have you. And then it's going to be, you know, at some point, uh, you know, the step up, I think gradually, you know, they get him used to being a good six round fighter, bedding in at six round, being able to do it at pace. Then the step up's going to come for eight rounds and, and 10 rounds. And, you know, light heavyweight division, it's not a stacked division, is it, in the UK? You know, opportunities are going to come, the phone might come. We've got BT Sports, Sky Sports, Box Nation. You know these, you know these, and a lot of it as well. It's a history of, uh, it's, it's, it's a division which has got a history of having fighters pull out as well at short notice, and the opportunities will come. You look at Tommy Taven, you know Liam Conroy, they're fighting in an eliminator. How far off Charlie, Charlie Schofield off going in with them? You know, I'd probably say another three, four fights, then he's going to be looking at getting in and around that level. Well, there's a, a new breed coming through, him. I think Anthony Yard's heading that new breed, uh, but he's going to be the money fight soon. Yard in the division. Just a quick update on the Facebook, the stream's now back up. They'll probably know that if they're watching it now, Luke. So, uh, yeah, so you mean you've got Anthony Yard, Ophi Burton, Frank Buglione. Yeah, you know what, Frank Buglione blocked me on Twitter because I said he was easier to hit than the January sales. And it's not like me to say something like that because I'm quite respectful, but yeah, a bit but disappointed in the wise guy. So I actually, I was going to get a pair of his hair in Hamilton boxer shorts and I cancelled it. So some lucky woman is going to see a pair of F&F &F Tesco boxes instead. That's assuming this 49 day dry spell ends. Yeah, no, I, I was talking about alcohol. I did get a lucky fumble in uh, the end of January. Hashtag VIP Boxing Live. Charlie Schofield's in the ring at the moment with Georgie Walewski. She's a beauty. I hope Luke Madeira's missus doesn't go through his phone because I reckon he's took about 37 screenshots of her anus on the way out of the ring. He's got bright red now that he knows I've, I've caught him. You've only caught him taking a... I've, I reckon I've counted at least 25 of getting in. Yeah, that's 62 shots that uh, he's, he put, he's, he's I, parking in a particular memory bank there. I, I, point, I saw him put a new SD card. Corners, 10 seconds. <laughs> I, think, I think Schofield did the right thing in that round. Keep it at range, get the jab going, get the one-twos going. Seconds out, round three. Here we go. Third round. Third of a six rounder. A few people have texted in and want to know the results from tonight. We've got Jordan Latimer beat Dwayne Green on points. Omar Durzari beat Craig Darvishan on points. John Telford 
beat Karen Gray. Lee Sharpie Oldham beat Karen, Kevin McCauley. Zeko Zekov knocked out Lee Carter in the first round. Mark Leach won on points against Brett Fido. Anthony Lee was sensational. Probably performance of the night so far, knocking out Tidal Lozanov. Bilal Raymond won against Fons Alexander on points. Atif Daniel, the doctor. He beat... Oh, you need to remind me. I've got the wrong opponent down. Who did he beat? Atif Daniel. Liam Griffiths on points. Luke Evans beat Ibra Riaz on points. Jo Charlie Schofield. Looks like he's heading towards a points victory over Georgi Valevsky. Can't afford to take any risks to be too reckless but I like what Charlie's doing here he's looking to load up he's looking to let some hooks in and bring those into play now as well I think he knows he's got Valevsky's number boxing well he's done that a few times as well I like the old turn there something Mike Gormley used to do another ex-Manchester fighter if you're just tuning, us in, tuning in again now guys get the tweets coming in hashtag VIP boxing live Nice controlled aggression there from Schofield. Just beginning to control the fight now, isn't he, Schofield? Yeah, he's enjoying job. it now. You see, he's, he's just stepping out of range when uh, Levitt trying to throw the shots. Measuring him. Looking to work his long shots now. You know, we, we put Charlie in one of the most improved last year. What do we want to see from him this year? I, I think, it's, it's for me, it's pretty much more of the same. I'd like to see him move up to eight-round status. I'd like to see him keep believing in himself, keep the aggression in the shot. you. The, the, the biggest change I've seen um, with, with Charlie is he believes in himself when he's throwing the shots now as well. I think as well as the body language, as well as the improvement in, in everything else. When he's throwing shots now, he's throwing shots to land them. He's not pouring with the shots. He's not just throwing them out there. He, he, that, that jab's a perfect example there. He's looking to put a right hand on the end of it. He's looking to whip an uppercut in. He's looking to whip a right hand in. I'd like to see him tested with somebody that's that's going to perhaps make him fight it a little bit, not at his own pace, because I think every fight I've seen Charlie's controlled the pace, which is a testament to him as well, but perhaps someone that's going to get in there, perhaps make him work for, for three minutes around. It is, a, like you said, though, it's, it's tricky, isn't it, at light heavyweight, because the talent pool, apart from the top guys and the guys at Charlie's level, the talent pool's quite thin, isn't it? It is. So, so you're looking for foreign opponents and trying to find a foreign opponent to push the pace isn't easy no it's not th but in, in fairness to Charlie I know this is a six round fight but you know you, you look at Liam Conroy and Tommy Tavum I wouldn't like to see him in with the um, the end of level street fighter baddie that um, Tavy went in was it McConzo um, I wouldn't like to see him in, in, with that, in with that opponent but you know it's a shame you know you, 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 you look at some of the some of the names that we had at at, um, at Light anyway you know we used to have Jordy McHale used to come out and give people I think that'd be a good test you know, I know he's a boxing on the Maltese circuit now, so that fight's not going to happen, but... You know, I'm sure... sure Boxing Mank, you know, I'm sure... John Pegg, I'm sure, you know, these matchmakers, I'm sure they can find somebody that's uh, that's a suitable opponent, somebody to, somebody to test Charlie. But let, let's just see, keep seeing him improving, you know, he's not in a rush, is he? You know, like you say, there's a change in the guard in the light heavyweight division, and, the, you know, the, ne the next batch of fighters are coming through, aren't they? Hashtag VIP Boxing Live on Twitter. Let us know what you think. Who would you like to see Charlie in with? Hashtag VIP Boxing Call Live. 10 seconds. This is the penultimate fight of the night. Liam Taylor, he's gloved up. He's been Second shadow out. boxing. He's been Round punching four. pads. It's his first fight for the finest gym. It's his first fight in a long time. Angel Emilov, what will he bring to the table? He was telling me backstage was Angel. He plans on bringing it and giving it to Taylor. He's going to have a go. Here's a question for you. Is he six foot five like his boxer ex says? No, he certainly isn't six foot five. He might be six foot five lying down, but he's definitely not six <laughs> foot five. He's a little podgy fella. Ryan Martin's tweeted in to bring a show to Northern Ireland. I'm all on board with that, mate. VIP in Northern Ireland. I'm up for doing it. It's let's do it. Let, let's get out there. Let's get out in there. In fact, should we confirm that? Let, let, let's, let's get on to Woody. It now. Let, let's get on to Woody. We had a big success, didn't we, last year when we had the Northern Ireland Irish fighters featured? Yeah, we did, yeah. Biggest night we had last year, I think, was uh, Kakatra and McCarthy here at the warehouse. It's funny, you know, I was talking to uh, to somebody, I know it's the other side of Ireland, I saw somebody from Dublin and they were talking about how Ireland get behind and back their fighters. And they said, he said Belfast is a really poor fight city until they get to like elite level. 
they say get to elite level and that's great he said but early doors they don't back the shows and you know, I don't know if that's true um, I've only been to the one show in Belfast and that was obviously Frampton Abelos so it was a big fight but yeah it'd be interesting I know the amateur stars bless me the amateur stars are huge heroes aren't they over there it may be the amateur stars get bigger crowds than the novice pros over in Belfast let us know hashtag VIP boxing live Alex, Alex Ray's tweeted in thanks for the tweet mate great show excellent engagement for the fans and able to ask Murray questions keep it up yeah Martin's gone down an absolute storm tonight I say I think his answers he was very honest as well Martin probably I might get a text of him tomorrow I did ask him one or two tricky questions which perhaps I shouldn't have asked him but balls to it we're not in this game to make friends are we uh, Mark, Martin's one of the most honest genuine people in the sport I think and he genuinely gets it as well yeah and he does yeah. and, and like I say the answers you know we asked him about his family and he gave a few answers there we asked him about Smigger you know I think people try and make a, a rivalry out sometimes and it was you know Martin, Martin just turned around it was, you know I loved hearing the story about bumping into him in Magaluf back in the ring Charlie Schofield he's controlled this fight won every round for me I think, I think, do you know what I'd like to see with Charlie? I'd like to see him box somebody that's a similar height as well. He always seems to be punching down. Or always seems to, you know, he always seems to be in, a, in there with somebody that's, you know, tying him up. And little telling off there off uh, Haywood's Mr. John Latham. One more fight to go after this. Liam Taylor and Angel Himenov. Emilov. It's been a good night. Still a good crowd in here tonight. Majority of people, you know, the Charlie Schofield's fans have been in early. They've been singing songs majority of the night. They've been down in a few bevies. A few Pinot Grigios for the ladies. I tell you, you know, it's the venue, there's still quite a few people in, but early on in the back at the bar and in the after party, the after party's been open since nine o'clock. Full. Yeah. I, I think this has done a good ticket. You know, there's been 12 fights. Quite a few, few of the people we spoke to before, and Lee, Lee Sharp did a couple of hundred. Leckie did at least a couple of hundred. Luke Evans sold his allocation tonight. Everyone seems to be, people seem to be enjoying it at the moment. You know, there's a, a talented group coming through, and the fans are following it. Boxing's yeah. booming at the moment. Yeah, we, we have, we, we've been a little bit critical as well, haven't we? You know, um, in terms of, of this venue, you know, it is a good venue, but I, I just, the, the touches that Steve and Darren Lamb have done tonight to this venue, I'd want to come back again. I remember the first small low show I went to. It was at Bowlers. Um, it was great, you know. I was, you know, we were sat there. I think, I think we had a meal actually. I think, uh, I think that was what we did. It was the day before we flew out on our um, first lads' holiday to Magaluf. Round five. And uh, oh, it, was a, it, it was a great. Forget, night. forget Bowlers. Tell us about Magaluf. Oh mate, I could tell you about Magaluf. It was, uh, it, it was, it was a very special holiday for myself. There involved a, a young lady from Leicester. So uh, yeah. But we, 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 that, that, that's probably one for even after the 11 o'clock it's no mind after the watershed Lim Valevsky's just come out here I think he's just looking to spoil now make his way to the final bell jump back on the easy jet flight home I say it's difficult for, for Schofield to look really good here that's just where he needs to he needs to keep it at range and on the way and perhaps look at working the uppercuts you know exactly that there whip, whip some of the shorter shots in bring, bring him round the side One more fight to go. Quite often these tall guys, he, like Charlie might not have many stoppages on his record, but once they start taking people out, the knockouts just flow, don't they? Thomas Hearns, you know, wasn't a puncher in the amateurs. When he turned pro, he was just destroying everybody. And it seems to be a, a bit of a theme with big tall guys. Once we work out how to use all the leverages, the knockouts just come. I, don't know, I was talking to somebody today um, that's a featherweight and that's put a bit of weight on and he was telling me about now he's back in the gym and he's punching harder and things like that and he just said he can feel his body changing you know the last few years and you know the, the maturity and you, you know you, you, you're becoming a man and, and what have you I do, I do think Charlie's going for it it does seem like Charlie, 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 Charlie's body is you know he's, he's, um, he, he looks so much leaner to me in there as well Looks so much more athletic, you know, his, his footwork, the way he's moving around the ring, lovely, lovely. You know what, let's say we've had a salvo. Salvo there from Schofield. Salvo count one. Oh, great uppercut from Schofield. The fuse is lit now. I think Schofield seen a Google button on Valevsky's in, and he decided to hit it twice. Double click on the chin, Charlie. Chin, chin. 
Nice shot for the Schofield. Just working that uppercut well now as well. Then Robert Rimmers obviously giving the instructions in the corner. Dowie Powell still with us out there in Wales. It's great to be able to get Wi-Fi out in Wales now, and you know, for him to be able to, you know, just 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 to experience some of the stuff that Scotland's been having for years. It's great. Great to have you on board, Dave. Keep 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 the messages coming in, mate. Like I say, it's a special night for Wales tonight. It's great to get out there in the third world areas of the country. Last few seconds of the round again now. I think I'll get in and find a sheep's head in me in my bed. Here we go. Final round, round number six. Hashtag VIP. Boxing live. There we go. I load him up and Evan shoots him. Yeah, that's a penalty kick that, wasn't it? Hashtag VIP boxing live. There it is. Top left hand corner. Send us your tweets, who's been the performance of the night, who's been fighter of the night, who's been your favourite guest in the box. We've had Sheldon Kay, we've had Martin Murray, we've had Steve Lillis, we've had Lee Oldham. Corners, ten seconds. Big wrestling fan, John Latham, you know. For your sixth and final round. Yeah, big wrestling fan, yeah. Bumped into him at a sting night. Not every breath you take. No, yeah, not yeah, that sting. What? So, so we're actually talking modern 90s and 2000 wrestling, not Cat Weasel and Big Daddy. Oh, no, I, I, do you know what? I, even I've not, not, not done that. Is that the World Series of... Uh, yeah, so that, but Latham's a fan of... Oh, Lat Latham's a fan, mate, yeah. Lovely uppercut again there from Schofield. He's looking, you know, he's got, he's got, you know, with the, with the jabs that, uh, that Schofield's been landing, his opponent's got to look at Papa Shango now with them, but... His eyes are getting a little bit marked up. I, I was just about to say, everybody's got the favourite wrestling moment. Yeah. What What's your favourite WWF, WWF, WWE moment? The one that always enters your mind. Do you know what? I, I've, I know I'm. Uh, I know I don't look old enough, but I was actually at Wembley Stadium when uh, the British Bulldog defeated Bret Hart. So, uh, and I've no since then I've met Bret, and uh, obviously, well, you, you might not know this, but the British Bulldog's actually buried less than it's probably about half a mile away from where I live in Goulburn. So he always gets talked about as being from Warrington. He's actually buried in uh, in Goulburn. And um, as much as Hulk Hogan's my favourite ever wrestler, you know, I eat my vitamins, I say my prayers. I'd have to say, being at Wembley State, we couldn't see it. We were watching it on the screen. And my dad got us up to walk out because when he hit him with a when he hit him with a power slam, we thought he'd got the one, two, three. But he hadn't. He actually kicked out on three. And then he, he got him with a you know he got him with a, another move a few minutes later. So yeah, there, there's my move. There, there, there's my. I get quite passionate about the wrestling. I, 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 I loved when Papa Shango cast a spell on Ultimate Warrior and he cried black blood. Do you know, I do remember that. Oh, it's fantastic. It was, it, it was an ongo ongoing battle for a while. Papa Shango was casting spells on the warrior. And one, one particular night, Shango got down to ringside and he waved his witch doctor necklace. I necklace. Remember it well. And the warrior started crying black blood. He, he really did, Luke. He really did start crying black blood. Do you know, I, I, I'm just looking as well, you know, and I don't know if the Liam Taylor's fans or perhaps Luke Evans or even Charlie Schofield's. I think we've got a couple of women that are big Ultimate Warriors fans just looking at the makeup on them ringside as well. If the Welsh don't get me, somebody's fans are going to get me. Keep the tweets going in, hashtag VIP Boxing Live. Lee, do you want to mention your favourite wrestling moment? Are you a wrestling fan? I've got to say, not really, but nope. I'll always remember when Jeff Hardy jumped off of a 40 foot steel thing onto someone. Yeah? I don't know who it was, I don't know when it was. I just who was remember your it flying off this big metal pole thing. Good on you. Charlie Schofield's about to jump up the rankings with another win. Still undefeated. Solid jab, that was, Neil. I think quietly the jab's had a bit, pretty big effect here. Charlie, no. Charlie Scope has done really well tonight. You know, you look at the time he's come out tonight boxing. It's gone 11 o'clock. He probably was in the ring about 20 past 11, 25 past 11. Yeah, he's won every round. He's been in with a spoiler, a shorter opponent. But Valeski's face busted up. I think the jab worked well. Charlie had his way, really, again. 
solid but unspectacular, but he's just going around, going about improving every single time we see him. Yeah, he's done a good job there. You know, that, that's uh, that, that left eye, I was trying to work out which eye it is. He's done a good job there. Come on, guys, one fight to go. Tweet us in. Just make way for the first lady of British boxing, Karen Priestley. That was a, that was a bit of wrestling as well, weren't it? The macho man. Oh, yeah. Dig it. Karen Priestley. Oh, yeah. Dig it. Ladies and gentlemen, after six three minute rounds of light heavyweight action, referee John Latham on this particular occasion has scored the contest 60 points to 54 points. Every round. For your winner. Now undefeated in nine professional contests, hailing from Manchester via Robert Grimmis, Phoenix Camp, Charlie Scarfield. And a final, ladies and gentlemen from Sophia's Georgi Walewski. Well done, Charlie Schofield. Great performance, 9-0.